Honestly, I'm a little bit worried about the future health of Rise of Kingdoms. So today I just want to talk about this, get these ideas out there and see if you guys are feeling the same sort of way, or maybe I'm just being paranoid. But first let's talk about the new commanders that were revealed just the other day. I was actually, I had left to do Thanksgiving things. Happy belated Thanksgiving to you guys. If you celebrate that is, but regardless, I'm not going to talk about anything in this video. That's not public knowledge. Okay. I don't want to get a spanking from daddy Lilith again. Okay. But what I will say is that the fact that I reported Sargon was coming to the game back in September, September 13th, I posted a video talking about how Sargon is definitely coming. It just feels good knowing that I was right yet again. That was months ago, boys, months ago. So if you want information about Rise of Kingdoms months before they're announced, you're going to want to subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time I upload a video. At least consider it. A lot of you guys think you're subbed, but you're actually not. So just go ahead and check. But anyway, we know that we're getting Sargon and Tariq. These are allegedly both infantry commanders, which for those of you who are wondering where are the leadership commanders, they did say that I believe because the range commanders are coming out that leadership is kind of it's in a weird spot okay and we kind of knew that when they skipped leadership for calves so I don't, I don't know if we're gonna ever get a leadership cycle again I, I'm really not sure but one thing we do know for sure is that neither of these commanders are a prime commander and honestly I was expecting one prime commander in every new commander lineup moving forward until all the old commanders got their primes. Okay. That's kind of what I thought would be the case. And I feel like Lilith implied that, but I guess not, I guess, Hey, maybe, maybe this means that there could be a cycle where we get two prime commanders. Like, can you imagine that would be crazy? It's just interesting to me that they broke that cycle of not releasing a prime commander here for infantry. Maybe they figured infantry already got a prime commander and they just don't want to do that so soon. I don't know. But for now, let's talk about the topic of today's video, which is the health of rise of kingdoms moving forward. Now, when I say health of the game, I'm referring to how many daily or monthly active users are on the game and how many new people are joining the joining the game or people uh returning players are coming back to the game versus the number of players that are leaving the game and at the core of that discussion is lilith's involvement with the development of this game so for example as a content creator i know for sure that when there's a big update like the egypt update or like the vikings update I typically see a spike in viewership. I think in general, Lilith spends a lot of money on those marketing campaigns. And I think in general, despite how cringy their ads are, uh, they're actually pretty effective just based on sheer numbers alone. I mean, millions of dollars are put into marketing rise of kingdoms. And I feel like the future of rise of kingdoms is going to depend on Lilith actively developing and promoting this game. I mean, that's obvious, right? If a game is getting fewer updates and is getting fewer marketing dollars behind it, well, then fewer people are going to know that the game exists or remember that the game exists and fewer people are going to play it. And that will just lead to a decline in player base over time, which brings me to why I'm talking about this in the first place. Okay. And the reason that I'm talking about this in the first place is because of this item right here the commander re-release chest. This is the latest indication in a small series of what are probably little teeny tiny red flags that I'm starting to pick up on as a player of a, you know, I've been playing this game since the end of 2018. So I've been playing this game for like four years now and items like this, uh, in combination with other red flags, we're going to talk about in this video really get me a little bit worried about the future of the game. Okay. Now, for those of you who don't know what this is in the latest Lucerne scrolls, they've implemented a new item, which is a commander re-release chest. This is the archer variant. Okay. And it will let you choose one sculpture from a selection of pre season of conquest, archer commanders as a reward. So this includes apparently all of the gold key commanders, as well as E song a and it also includes the season two archer commanders of Edward and Tamiris. Um, this player right here has a screenshot of this, uh, of this choice here. I think that the only reason that it doesn't show the gold key commanders is because it doesn't, uh, he, I think they've expertise all of the other options, right? So I think once the commander's expertise, maybe it doesn't show up here, or maybe it's possible that it only gives you these two. 
I don't know. I'm not about to gem my way up to level 10. So you guys can comment down below if you can get gold key uh, archers from here, meaning El Cid and YSG, of course, is what I'm talking about. But regardless, this is for free to play players and for low spenders or for new players to the game, a good item. This is a good item that helps players catch up to the players that have expertise those a long time ago, right? So if I had expertise to YSG, two years ago and somebody who just starts the game now now they just start working on YSG and it's going to take them six months to expertise him like you know I'm way ahead right like they're barely catching up so this is in general a good item however if we go through here it looks like what they've done is and they've sprinkled these throughout uh it's cool that this one's free but they've replaced the avatar frame and also the uh sort of the name plaque that you get on your city here okay those are notably missing from the Lucerne Scrolls, which honestly, I don't care that much about those things. And I think that's why Lilith decided to remove them as opposed to removing other things. Maybe they removed gold heads. I don't know what else they removed here, to be honest with you. Obviously, a universal head is way better than this, right? But let's pivot to something else, okay, that we have to talk about, which is relevant to what we're discussing today. And that is the increase in giving us items like this where we can choose a city skin that was already released so we've seen this item before and you know it's given us various different uh different city skins that we can pick from right They're, they've had multiple ways of getting new city skins but to me these are starting to feel a little bit more common right this is starting to feel like okay we have a thanksgiving event we're not getting a new city skin for the thanksgiving event right that to me is another red flag and on top of that correct me if i'm wrong but i feel like this exact artwork has been used in a previous thanksgiving event i could be wrong about that but i certainly feel like it is the case and we definitely have seen this event before so what i'm getting at here is that it seems to be the case that we're getting more rewards that on paper are great for players because you get to pick what you want that's always better than randomness right but at the end of the day this is in lieu of new artwork we are not getting new avatar frames we're not getting new name plaques we're not getting new artwork for the event we're not getting new city skins and one thing that that tells me is that they are cutting back on some of the artwork development for the game i mean it just makes sense if you're not releasing as much artwork you don't have to pay as many people to make that artwork and this is coming at a time where rise of kingdoms is a few years old now it's a few years old we have call of dragons which is set to be released probably very soon for those of you who don't know what call of dragons is this is essentially a brand new city builder mobile game from the same development team as rise of kingdoms it's being promoted and distributed by a, a, a lilith games subdivision called farlight games which is responsible for essentially localizing the release of games like this internationally so for all intents and purposes this is rise of kingdoms 2 being developed by the same people and so that begs the question what happens to rise of kingdoms when call of dragons comes out well it would make sense that if they start to cut back on artwork development and also slow down the release of commanders which it seems like that's the case i think that they've already discussed that they're going to be tweaking the release schedule of commanders and w previously we've talked about here on this channel I've, I've talked about this where it seems like they're changing it to every seven months but that could be a misunderstanding or a mistranslation of what was actually said some are claiming that what is actually happening is they're going to change the commander's cycle so the generations to seven months i don't i honestly don't don't know what it's going to be and we'll have to just wait and see what happens and whether or not we start to get fewer commanders but the whole purpose of this video right is let's assume that we start to get commanders at a slower rate and we're not getting new city skin themes or we get them maybe less often or maybe we only get them for zenith of power on top of that we get uh, less or fewer or zero new 
avatar frames or maybe they're only made for special events like uh, osiris league right what all of that means to me in combination with the game being four years old and in combination with uh, essentially a spiritual successor being released by the same developers to me that has me wondering what is the future of rise of kingdoms i mean it's really well known that for gotcha games it makes more sense for the developer to uh, at some point abandon a current project or slowly you know wind down a current project uh and then release a new project instead of continuing to update the old project because there's just more money to be made i mean this is common sense that's the reason why there's a new call of duty every year and they don't just keep updating the old one and selling skins right like sure you could keep adding skins to call of duty black ops 2 and people would still keep buying it but you're gonna make more money if you have a whole new game that's got all new you know assets and you can sell the game again you're just gonna make more money that way and, and that's the same thing for game for gotcha games for games like rise of kingdoms Genshin Impact for example is not the first game that was produced by miHoYo that has anime characters that you can summon for a lot of money so in the same way I'm looking at Rise of Kingdoms and I'm saying okay well would it make sense for them to continue to support Rise of Kingdoms at the same level that they've been supporting it for the past four years and I'm you know I'm getting worried that Lilith is gearing up to slow down the support for the game and and I don't want to like spread panic or fear or anything like that because this is again I'm just I'm talking about this as a discussion I want to get your thoughts and opinions on this in the comment section below but it certainly is starting to feel that way to me and again from a business perspective it would make more sense for them to just go all in on a new game and try to make as much mo as much money from that as possible now the counter argument to what I've discussed in this video is formations right we have the formations update coming out which is a, going to be and is already a relatively big update it's a sizable update okay they're adding ranged combat to the game which is a whole new fighting mechanic they just added a new desert kvk and when they announced call of dragons they also announced that they're going to attempt to speed up the the implementation of new civilizations and that is a pretty big uh artwork demand right so certainly there are counter arguments to my uh my worry right to my concern about the future of rise of kingdoms so i'm not saying that you know definitely rise of kingdoms is dying and if we take a look at the interest in rise of kingdoms in google trends this will give us another idea of the popularity of the game right now so if we look right you would expect that 2020 to be when rise of kingdoms was most popular because that's when rise of king everyone was inside every single mobile game exploded and every single video game exploded during that time because everyone was inside consuming games and yet what we see is that the actual peak of rise of kingdoms for google search was january of this year so rise of kingdoms was searched more often in january of this year than ever before right even during this was during uh the summer of right this was when vikings came out and there was a mega marketing push probably the biggest marketing push that they've ever done uh was was right here so the fact that the game this year and two years after that was more popular is, is shocking right but even still where we are right now november the end of november here we're at 39 i mean that's pretty much where we were exactly a year ago and two years ago as well so it seems like we're in the same spot that we've been in the past few novembers if we go over to youtube search we'll see uh, the exact same thing here as well uh the game's spiking in in popularity at the end of january however i will say that the peak of rise of kingdoms youtube interest for the united states at least was actually at the end of may and beginning of june of 2021 which ironically was right around the time that i actually made my first rise of kingdoms ad video you know this really cringy one that a lot of you guys probably this is the reason you even found my youtube channel in the first place so i'm not saying i'm responsible for that but clearly i rode that wave and that was nice but anyway it does seem like interest in rise of kingdoms in the united states at least from youtube search is definitely lower now than it was this time last year right we're looking november 20th it's at a 28 and november 21st last year it's at a, 
at a 47 right so at least in the United States I'm starting to feel like rise of kingdoms uh, at least again on YouTube search it's definitely starting to dwindle a little bit even on web search for the United States uh, right now we're at a 34 and last year we were at a 51 so who knows maybe rise of kingdoms will continue to be super popular worldwide and it'll just get less popular here in the United States I can tell you that the keyword rise of kingdoms is uh searched over 600,000 times every single month so I would say that that's uh, that's pretty healthy that's that's decent it's been like that for a while now I I don't recall it ever being significantly uh significantly higher or lower than that so really what I'm trying to say is you know if the developers were going to slow down the the support for the game I feel like right now is the time where they would start to do that and these little items like this to me are are red flags of that inevitable switch to focusing on call of dragons now again i could be completely wrong and i do think that there exists a world where call of dragons and rise of kingdoms could simultaneously exist together but that also you know begs the question like why would one company want to release a competitor to its own game right it would make more sense for them to just kill off rise of kingdoms and have everyone focus on call of dragons and that and that just be it anyway i would love to hear from you guys in the comments section below do you guys feel like they are going to shift gears and focus more on call of dragons and sort of start to leave rise of kingdoms behind or do you think rise of kingdoms is you know maybe only at the halfway mark of its popularity because it did perform really well at the beginning of this year if you enjoyed the video drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace